Hello everyone. Imagine I have a page like this one and it has third party chat widget. Right? I can click on a chat, type something and get the message. And in my application, I even have a button that opens the chat widget. Okay? So the chat widget is loaded by the page by listening to the window load event. So it, it's loaded asynchronously. Right? In order for you to not slow down the main page, because you don't need it like immediately. And yet you do need it by the time you click this button. This button uh, just triggers this tidio chat API that open method. Without any safeguards, this is not safe. And I'm just going to demonstrate it uh, right here. So let me open the DevTools. So if you just load the page, you know, the widget loads its JavaScript, creates the markup, and then everything is good. You can open the chat. Now, imagine the connection is a little bit slow, right? So we're going to throttle it to, let's say, slow 3G. We're going to reload the page, and then we're going to click open chat. So what happened? You see the error? Tidio chat app API is not defined. The user can literally click the button before the third-party JavaScript has loaded. Now, we can easily safeguard access to the open method, right? And my preferred way is to say tidy up chat. If it's defined, then you can click open. Now, this is not really good user experience because if we reload the page and click, well, it just does nothing. The users are kind of used to it, right? Most of the users say, oh, well, if a page did not respond when I first clicked it, just click it again, spam it. But you know, in the next video, I'm going to show how to actually solve this problem by disabling the UI, literally. But the question I want to show today and answer today is, how do we test this? How do we test that our application opens the chat if you're using third-party JavaScript? So we can open the chat by, you know, finding the button and clicking on it. So let's open Cypress. Notice this is working, right? We want to verify that if this JavaScript for third party loads slowly, then our application handles it. And the second thing that I'm going to show is how to actually wait for JavaScript to load. So let's look at our JavaScript, right, right here. We have this URL, so we want to slow it down. Right? So before we start loading it, we can intercept it, and we're going to just put this URL, and for now, let's just give it an alias, Talio. Now, notice we actually hit this intercept, that means we put the correct URL, and because this is hard-coded for our app, we can just put uh, the wildcard right here. We don't want to be that precise. So still works. Another thing, we don't want to click the open chat button until the JavaScript is loaded. So we can wait for that network request to happen. Even if it's slowed down, we'll wait for it manual click the button. Notice it's working. But one thing that many users ask, like how do I slow down specific resource to make sure that my page handles it gracefully? Here's how we can do this. If you take the request, Right. If you supply a request handler function, then you can do lots of things. You can respond with a stop, or you can say, okay, just continue the request, go to the server, and you'll get a response. And you can modify the response object or not. So in our case, we don't want to modify the response, so we can just say, you know, request continue, and we load the actual JavaScript from third-party server. But here's the cool thing we can do. We can return a Cypress promise, which is a Bluebird promise, right? That has a built-in delay method. So let's say three seconds. So we can return a promise that will resolve after three seconds. And once it resolves, what do we want to do? Well, that's when we want to continue with our request. Okay. Our promise, uh, promise resolve problem. Okay. So notice again, look at the uh, timing on the test. Notice three seconds pass, and then uh, JavaScript is returned. Now we don't even have to do Cypress promise resolve that delay. We can 
directly go to delay. This is a shortcut, right? So we are returning a promise, results after three seconds, then continues. And another thing that we can do, which is kind of, kind of cool, we don't even have to do all that. We don't have to say continue and so on. We can return a promise that does nothing, right? So let me just get all the braces in order. By returning a promise that returns after three seconds, you're telling Cypress, hey, here's my intercept handler. But because it actually re returns undefined from the delay promise, then Cypress knows it's just a spy and it allows the request to continue. So this is the shortest way to delay a particular request in Cypress by three seconds. And then we allow the page to load and then we wait for the network request to actually happen and then we click the button. One other thing, right? Let's say we don't say guard anything. So we really, you know, imagine if we didn't wait for this network request. Well, we're getting the error from the application, which actually breaks our test. Because by default, Cypress, if it catches an application error, breaks the test. Here's how we can safeguard clicking on a button. We want to only click when the window object has this Talia chat IPO object. Here's the simplest way, way to check. So we'll get the window from the application and we'll say it's and what is it looking for? Tidy chat IPO. The it's has a built in assertion, it cannot be undefined. So this particular command, well, two commands really, will retry getting the window, retry getting its tidy chat API property. And once it gets defined, then it finishes and it continues on clicking the open chat button. So this is another way to safeguard the access and make sure we don't click prematurely. Of course, we'll have to update our application to actually solve it because you know fast user will hit this problem again. Another thing that I wanna show really quickly in this video, we don't have to click on open chat. Imagine we just want to open the chat window ourselves from the test. Well, we can just say invoke, open. Right, because this is what our application does. It grabs this object, calls open. We can invoke the method open directly from our task in the application space and everything appears. So this is how we can slow down a particular request, make sure it happens by waiting or safeguard our application by observing a property on window and even invoking a method on the object in our application space.